Hey crafters, Amy here, and I have a super creepy Halloween card to share with you, and this is totally out of my comfort zone. So I have a couple of new stencils here. This is the Voodoo Doll and the Long Drip stencils. These are part of the October 2022 release set of Colorful Life Designs, and I'm gonna use them to make a creepy card. Now I have this background with the Long Drip stencil that I made with some very bright red ink, and here's a photo of the finished card. So lots of elements, not clean and simple, pretty much the exact opposite of clean and simple, but I'm gonna show you how I made it. So to start, I have this, it's kind of like a, I don't even know how you would describe this color. It's not craft, but it's kind of like a light beige colored cardstock. This is um, a lightweight, maybe 65 pound inexpensive cardstock. And I'm just masking around the body of this voodoo doll. Um, and initially I'm using some residual ink left over on my brown blending brush, but ultimately I do come in with a couple of these distressed ink minis just to kind of really add to um, the ink blending here. And I must have some hair stuck on it or something, but I'm struggling. So basically I'm just going to ink blend just to add some gradient and color to make this voodoo doll uh, stand off the background. And I'm going to do all sorts of grungy whatnots on this card, and this is not normally my jam. So I'm really going outside my comfort zone to create this card. And I know it's creepy, um, very different than a lot of the cards I make. So not for everybody, but maybe um, you have some Halloween lovers in your life, or maybe you have... Um, people in your life that love like scary horror movies or something like that. So it's just fun and I love the layering elements of this that you can kind of um, add the different little bits, um, the facial portions and the stitching and the hearts and the and the needle. Um, I love when she builds these different elements into the stencils. It's just really unique and fun. So I'm going to come in with this black soot color just to kind of add the stitching onto the face of the voodoo doll um, and ultimately the other components. So very simple ink blending for this first part um, just to lay down the, the detail of the voodoo doll. And it's really easy to mask off the parts that you aren't using. So um, as you can see, I'm just using post-it tape. It's not difficult. They're not so close together that you can't really um, make it work. So you just kind of line it up where you want it on the design and mask off the areas you don't. And then just do ink blending to kind of fill in these little details on this, this little creepy voodoo doll. <laughs> so I remove the post-it tape and then I have to figure out if I want to do the heart or if I want to do the little um, nails that your pins that you stick in a voodoo doll, I decided to do the heart, um, just kind of pale with like some leftover residual gray or black. And then I'm going to mask off the pin portion and put this down a few different places. Um, again, not hard to do. You just kind of mask off the area that you, that you want. And I have this hickory smoke because um, I want it to kind of look like a metal pin. I actually was going to come back in and add some little like white glint highlights with a gel pen, which I forgot to do. Maybe I'll go back and finish the card up with that. But I'm just kind of putting it in so that the needles are going to where I stenciled the heart. So I'm just wiping it off just so I don't get some ink where I don't want it. But as you can see in the finished design, this is a very deliberately messy, grungy card. So it really wouldn't matter if I ended up getting ink where I didn't want it because I don't think it would really show. But anyway, I'm just still working through this design um, with this second pin here. I can't remember if I do a third or not, but this one kind of goes off the side of the panel. And the panel is smaller than A2 size. Obviously, I have it cropped down because I want that uh, creepy long drips um, on the on the card panel or the card base rather to show um, behind this little design feature here. So I'm done with the ink blending here and then I decide I want to grunge it up. So I start ripping. Um, the way I like to do it is I like to pull or tear the paper towards myself. You can see here it kind of it seems less controlled when you do it this way. If you kind of do it where you're pulling the, the paper towards yourself, it seems almost like you get a little bit more of the cool feathered look um, and a little bit more control with tearing. So I want to make it look really distressed and grungy. And then I'm thinking, oh, that, that background is way too white. So that stark white is really standing out too much. So I'm just going to work through ways to kind of grunge this up um, both on the card base and on the panel and I decide I'm gonna crumple it up. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna squish it all up. 
So again, <laughs> not my normal way of doing things. Um, I'm really just, just going with it, right? Um, so then I'm going to use some ink blending and the actual ink pad just to really grunge up the edge. You can run this little mini ink pad right along the edge um, and make it more messy, kind of let it come off onto the white and really um, accentuate the, the torn edges of the panel and of the card base. So I'm making it look dirty here. I'm getting rid of that stark white. <laughs> I decided to bring in fire. Um, can't say I've done this on a video before, but I have a little uh, lighter in my crafty stash um, just to kind of like melt the ends of ribbon or whatever uh, and I decided to just really grunge it up so I'm carefully uh, lighting up the edges of this panel and not starting a fire in my craft room that wouldn't be good um, but I'm definitely making this one distressed so again this isn't for everyone but um, I went with it go big or go home right so if I'm gonna make it creepy and grungy I'm I'm gonna go big so I'm just kind of blowing it out and then just actually using my wet um, stamp chamois just to kind of really put out the embers so that I don't you know set my whole craft room on fire because that wouldn't be good so uh, now that I've officially grunged it up sufficiently then I decide I'm gonna lay down this panel with some dimension so I'm gonna get some foam tape here and put it on the back of this little panel just to really prop it up on the card base here. And this is where I do end up running out of foam tape. Um, thankfully, I have another order that came the next day uh, from scrapbook.com after I ran out of that. But here I decide to burn the edges of the card base as well, just so we have some continuity with the panel. So I'm letting that kind of <laughs> cook up and burn away some of the paper on the edges and then again I'm just using my wet stamp chamois just to kind of put out the embers so um, yeah very different I recognize this is not my normal style uh, may not be your style either but I hope you enjoyed it uh, it's fun to have some creepy sort of cards here for friends that are really into Halloween or into scary movies and it was fun to just kind of <laughs> go outside the box and make this creepy card. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. Oh, and I added a little bit of black blingage just to add some other visual interest. Um, but that's going to finish the card. So thanks so much for spending time with me. Be sure to check out the rest of the release. It's not all Halloween. There's lots of creepy Halloween stuff, but there's also lots of really pretty um, fall inspired or autumn, you know, florals and things like that. So nice variety to choose from if this isn't your jam, but I appreciate you watching it and I'll catch you next time. Bye.